I'm Ryan Miller. This is part two of the Unity RPG tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to delete our plain ground and replace it with a terrain. Terrains are easy to make in Unity 3. Just uh, click Terrain, Create Terrain. And there it is. By default the terrain you create might be very very big. Um, this is all in scale to your character. My character is quite small. So I'm going to click Terrain Set Resolution to resize this. I'm going to change the width and length to 100 by 100 and the height to 10. If you've never used a game engine with a terrain system before, terrain systems work with a height map, meaning there's a grayscale image behind it controlling each vert with each pixel, pushing it up or down depending on the shade of gray it is, white being up and black being down. So I'll click the set resolution. We have a much smaller usable space now. I'm just going to move it to the center of our character. Push it down a little bit. Already here inside the terrain tools of the inspector, we have all the tools we need to push it up or down. All we have to do is left click drag and we can push the terrain up. Hold down shift drag and we can push it back down. You can adjust the brush size and opacity. There's also a lot of existing brushes for us to choose from and sculpt with. I always recommend adding a directional light to your scene or, or some kind of lighting system before you start painting with terrain, otherwise it will be very, very difficult to see. So if you don't have one already, add one in, rotate it into kind of a an afternoon light so that we can actually see a, a clear light direction. There is no special tool to use your terrain. All you have to do is select your terrain, the inspector will pop up with the tools that you need right away. In addition to the Raise Lower Terrain tool, we also have one for painting the terrain height. This is very, very similar to, to painting the, the Raise Lower, except we're adding in a height manually. So we'll get to that height and then it will stop. So this is very, very useful for painting plateaus, or ditches, or riverbeds, or, or what have you. So we could crank that up and go even higher with the next one. We also have a smooth height tool. This is just like a regular blur tool, so this is going to, to round out any really, really harsh details, any shearing in your textures. We also have paint textures. Paint textures is what allows us to actually go beyond this boring gray texture. I'm going to import some images I made here just into the environment sources folder. I made a really quick uh, rock, dirt, and grass texture just by coloring some noise in Photoshop. So I'll put those in. We don't need to make materials for these since Terrain just uses textures. Then I'll click on Edit Textures, Add Texture, and then I can pick these and assign them. This size is actually referring to the, the repeating of the texture, so if I go with the lower number in this, like 5, I'll get a pretty big texture on the surface, but if I were to go back and edit this, change it to let's say 20, you can say it gets very very large in the surface. We can also add multiple textures here and paint in between them, so I'll add a, a dirt texture as well here. And with that selected I can just paint it like I would paint anything else on the terrain. You can always go back to the other texture, maybe use a, a fancy brush, and paint it back on. I'll also show you paint details here. Paint details allows us to paint uh, stuff like grass or flowers or, or little things along the ground. So we click edit details we can add a grass texture. A grass texture in this case is just going to be a, a flat plane that stands upright like a card. We're going to need a texture for that. I've already gone ahead and made uh, grassblades.png. This is just a couple of strokes in Photoshop up and down with a transparent background. I'll drag that into our environment sources and I'll add it as a grass texture. So 
So now when I paint this, I'm going to get a lot of grass blades as my grass texture. The reason I'm getting so many here is because the, the density settings are set very, very high. Again, this is probably a scale issue in my scene. If we go into terrain settings, the, the rightmost button here, all we have to do is turn the detail density way, way down. So if I change it to 0.001, that's a much more uh, reasonable texture in my mind. Play around with the other settings here too. Um, there's detail distance, so if you get far away, it's how much it starts actually culling the detail there. You've probably seen this happening in games a lot where details are fading out the further away you get. Unity will also add wind to your detail meshes as well, which is kind of weird. I'll show you them at work here. So we see them actually swaying back and forth here. Um, I usually like to turn this off. All you have to do is crank it down to zero and it will leave you alone or you can play with it. One thing that's starting to become very apparent in this is that the camera is staying right where it is. We have a very fixed camera here where it would be very nice for it to follow the character. In previous projects, we've been able to just parent the camera to the character to make it follow the character. But if we do that in this case, we get some pretty wonky stuff happening. Because the character is rotating, and because the camera is the angle that it is, we're actually getting crazy camera rotations when we move the character around. We want the camera's position to move, but we don't want it rotating. So instead of parenting, we've got to rely on a script to do this. So inside my scripts folder, I'm just going to create a new C sharp script. I'll call it camera follow. What the camera follow needs is it first of all it needs a transform to keep track of where the player is or the target, because the target could be anything. It could be an enemy, it could be a cutscene. We also want to save an offset. We want to save an offset because we don't want the camera position to be the player position. We want it to be relative to the player position, and that's why we use an offset. So when the game starts, we'll calculate this offset. This offset is equal to the target's transform position minus this object's transform position. The vector 3 in between those is how we get that space back in the update loop. Whenever we're scripting any kind of camera, we want to use late to update instead of regular update. This makes sure that this update happens once all the other scripts updates have already finished. This is really important for anything that involves a player moving around. So now all I have to say is transform.position is equal to target.transformPosition plus offset. Put that on the camera. We need to make this target public so we can actually see it in the inspector and apply the player to it. There we go. Let's give it a play. This should be a minus, not a plus. There we go. So now we have a camera that follows around our player instead of just staying in one spot. If you have any steep cliffs in your level, you've probably noticed that this character can sort of fly. If you continue walking and holding down the mouse button, he'll only drop when you let go. This is obviously not very acceptable behavior. The reason this is happening is because we're modifying velocity to a new value. Remember, rigidbody.velocity equals transform forward.speed. Well, that moves the character forwards very nicely, but it is actually constantly resetting his y position to what it already was. So it's essentially cancelling gravity. We can change this just by rewriting this to specifically address the x and the z, but not the y. So let's change this to a 
new vector 3 transform dot forward x so we're, we're separating this out right we'll use the rigid body's existing velocity and transform forward z so now essentially what we've done is we've said the y position should stay where it is then we try that out if I walk over a steep mountain I'll just fall right off as I continue walking another thing we've overlooked is we haven't actually played the idle animation for this character anywhere the idle animation is only one frame but we'll be able to see the the pose that it plays once we script it in remember all of this walking stuff happens under input get mouse button zero so to get an idle cycle, all we have to do is wait for the mouse button to not be pressed. Get mouse button up, and then throw code for playing an idle animation in there. We can copy and paste this walk animation loop and replace it with idle. So now when I stop walking, he'll jump right back to the idle pose. In this case it's a pose because it's only one frame, but if there was an animation sequence here with actual keyframes it would play that whole sequence.